The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The readings this Sunday speak to us about the kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom of heaven exists here on earth and also in heaven, properly speaking. Here on earth, the kingdom of heaven is the church. And in heaven, properly speaking, the kingdom of heaven is also the church, very often known as the church triumphant. Now, the readings this weekend, they speak about the church, the kingdom of heaven, both on earth and in heaven, under three different symbols. The first is a house, the second is a wedding feast, and the third is a mountain. The response to real psalm says, I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. So that refers to our life as Christians, both on this earth and in heaven above. We want to live in the house of the Lord, that is, be members of his church, of his kingdom, throughout our lives, being faithful members, right? There are people who cease to be members, right? They choose to leave the church. They choose to leave the kingdom. That happens. As we'll see in the Gospels, others choose not to enter into the house of the Lord. Others don't persevere. So we want to be members, we want to live in the house of the Lord for our whole lives in this world and for all eternity in the next. The second image is that of the wedding feast. We find that in today's Gospel when our Lord says explicitly, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. So the king, of course, is God the Father, and he gives a wedding feast to the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, his son. He dispatched his servants to summon invited guests to the feast. So the servants who were dispatched, they're the apostles, first and foremost. The apostles who went out and were inviting people to believe, to repent, and to be baptized. It is to enter the church. But they refused to come. That is, there were many of those who heard the words and the preaching of the apostles, and they 
were not interested. They didn't have faith. They did not receive baptism. And so a second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. So this second round of servants who are sent, those are the collaborators with the apostles. Okay, those are the successors of the apostles who continue to preach the word of God and to invite everyone to come to the feast that is to receive the sacraments. Right? This is the banquet that we have as members of the church, the seven sacraments, which communicate God's life and grace to our souls. And what was the response to this second round of servants who went out? The gospel says, some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. Okay, this refers to those souls who are indifferent. This is the sin of indifference towards God, his kingdom, his word, and his grace. Indifference, one goes to his farm, another to his business. That means these souls are more concerned and interested in the things of this world, right? These are the thorns, the briars that choke the word of God and do not allow it to bear fruit. The cares and anxieties of this world. And these souls are more interested in that than the kingdom of heaven. So that is indifference. But there are others. It says the rest laid hold of his servants mistreated them and killed them and this has happened to preachers of the gospel they have been killed persecuted martyred now that's not the sin of indifference that's actually worse that's the sin of malice malice towards god his truth and his grace and mercy having that malicious will to persecute and kill his messengers. And so what happened on the part of God? The king, that is God the Father, was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. That refers to an actual historical event, namely when Titus came to Jerusalem in 70 AD and flattened the place. Now do you know, since that time, the temple of Jerusalem has not been rebuilt. And that is not a coincidence. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. That is, they made themselves unworthy. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. So this now refers to the worldwide evangelization, not only of the Jewish people, but also the Gentiles, to the known world at the time. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. You see that? Everyone is invited to enter the church, those who are bad and those who are good. Now what does that mean? Well, it means those who are bad by nature, right? They just live according to their passions, are generally sinful people. Okay? They're called to conversion, to receive God's mercy, baptism, and the sacraments, to change that bad way of life and turn it into a good way of life. Now, it says that also those who were good were called. That is, those who were naturally good, right? They had a a natural disposition to be kind and patient and prudent in these type of things. Okay, these people too were called. But that natural goodness, which is not sufficient for eternal life, needs to then be transformed into supernatural goodness by means of supernatural things. Okay, supernatural faith, baptism, and then all of the uh, grace that comes along with the sacraments. Many are invited, but few are chosen. Now, we should understand that many to mean everyone, right? 
everyone is invited, and that's what the prophet Isaiah says in today's first reading. So we move now from the wedding feast. We talked about the house, the wedding feast. Now we're going to the mountain, another symbol of the church with which today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah talks about. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples, right? The church, her sacraments, the gospel, it is for everyone. A feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. That refers to the Eucharist especially, all of the sacraments in general, but especially the Eucharist in this life but it also refers to the next life, right? The eternal banquet that awaits us when we won't have the Eucharist anymore, right? The sacraments are for this world. In the next world, we will have that loving, intimate, continuous communion of love with God, the angels, and the saints. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, right? The ignorance and darkness and obscurity of intellect that abounds everywhere is dispelled by the light and gift of faith in this world. And in the next world, even the veil of faith, right? Because there's a certain obscurity even to the truths we know by the light of faith. But in the next world, even that veil is gone. When we have the light of glory and see God face to face. This is so beautiful. He will destroy death forever. God has destroyed spiritual death in this world here and now. Again, by means of his grace and the sacraments. Dead souls, those who are in mortal sin, come to life. Where? Right over there in the confessional. Spiritual death is destroyed. Supernatural life is given. And then it also refers, as I've said before, to the next life. When we will have immortal glory. The Lord God will wipe away the tears of every face starting in this world by giving us hope, right? That's what faith provides. There is no problem, difficulty, trial in this world that should cause us to enter into despair. Not with the truths of the faith that we have. We always have hope in eternal life. And then... In the next world, possession of what we have hoped for here and now. And the book of Revelation says once again that God will wipe away the tears. No more tears in heaven, but only rejoicing. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. Here in this life, that is the stain of original sin. Removed, cleansed by the waters of baptism. The reproach of the people he will remove also in the next life, when we will be impeccable, that is, incapable of sinning. These are all the wonderful mysteries that are revealed in this weekend's readings regarding the church, the kingdom of heaven. In this world, it starts here and then is completed and consummated in the kingdom of heaven, properly speaking, in the next world. And so the prophet Isaiah, he concludes, what does he say? Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. Do we reflect on these truths in our lives? We call ourselves Christians, we're here at Mass, but are our daily lives more something like those who are indifferent, one to his farm, another to his business? Do we tend to live our daily lives completely forgetful of the kingdom of heaven to which we belong now and that has been promised to us then? 
Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. We need to reflect on these mysteries on a daily basis in order to possess this joy here and now, and then in its fullness, then. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.